Hello and welcome to the start of a widget based series covering how to create a tab based menu. Now we are going to support both controller and keyboard and mouse as well, so stay tuned for extra parts to cover that. In this first part we'll be going through the basic setup and creation of our main menu screen and the core menu itself. So let's begin. Okay, to start things off we're going to create our main menu scene here. Um, first thing I'm going to do is place a camera where we want the camera to be. So I'm going to search for a camera actor and drag that into our scene. And we're just going to reposition this to be how we want it to be. Okay, like this. That'll do. And I want to make that camera the default camera for the level. So the way you do that is you go to the level blueprint and with your camera selected, in level blueprint just right click and create a reference to the camera actor so we want this to happen right at the very start so we use a begin play and on begin play we're going to set the view target now the view target is managed by the player controller so first of all we need to get the player controller reference and once we've got that we can then do set view target with blend And the new view target here is going to be our camera actor. So blend time we leave at zero because we make it instant. And because it is going to be zero, we don't have to worry about the rest of these settings here. Compile and save that. And let's just push play. And you'll see that the level starts off with that camera in position. So uh, let's just actually get rid of that background noise there because that's kind of annoying. Yeah. There we are. Okay, so there's our camera in position. We now want it to display the main menu. So we're going to create a new folder here to help us manage our system folders. And in here, we're going to create a new user interface widget blueprint. And in Unreal 5, you get to choose what type of widget you want to use. We want to make a user widget. And we're going to call this one main menu underscore w. And in this one, we're going to set up the basic appearance of our main menu using a tab system. So you're going to go into the main menu and add in a canvas panel. This will let us place anything we want onto the scene as we see fit and organize it with great degrees of freedom. Now, a tab system consists of two parts, essentially. You've got the tab bar at the top of the screen where you've got multiple buttons, and then you've got also the content that you want to switch between itself. So let's create those two sections up here. So for this, because they're going to be stacked on top of each other, we know we're going to need a vertical box. We're going to drag a vertical box into our panel. And when you drag anything to a canvas panel, it will, by default, put it into the top left corner like this. When it's stretched across the whole entire screen, just go to the right hand side anchors and you'll see this button down here in the corner. If you hold down shift and control at the same time and click on it, it will auto adjust all the offsets down to zero and the alignment will be perfect too. Inside our vertical box here, we're going to have two sections. The first section is going to be a horizontal box for buttons. So let's search for horizontal and put that in there. There it is. And if it isn't stretched across the whole thing, just go to the right hand side and change the horizontal alignment here to be filled across the whole entire screen. And the other section we're going to have here is a widget switcher. So let's go in and search for widget switcher. And if you click on that one, you'll see it's also up top here too. Now with the widget switcher in this case, we want it to fill the available space. So if we go to the right hand side and change it from auto to fill, it will fill up the available space left in the vertical box. Now the horizontal box is really thin, but that's okay because what's going to happen is when we put our buttons in, it's going to make it stretch open for us. So we're just going to rename our widget switcher here to be a bit more user friendly. So we call this one content switcher. And that'll do. The next thing we're going to do is create the horizontal boxes buttons in our scene here. Now you can't just use the standard button that you get here on its own. You can't just drag that into here. But if we do, it kind of just breaks with controller support. 
if you want controller support you kind of have to make your own buttons essentially the main reason why is because the normal hover and press uh, styles don't translate over for when it receives focus uh, which is annoying but it, that's the way you've got to deal with it so we're going to make our own button uh, by going and create another widget and this is going to be a tab menu button and underscore w and in here we're going to do a simple button design now it does still need a button so it still works with mouse and keyboard let's drag that into there and put in the button now for the button's sake we're going to change its appearance in, uh, in the next video and we'll make it look a bit prettier but for now let's just put in the main content we need so we need a button and we need some text let's drag in our text value and put that inside our button and there's our text block now for our button here we need to make sure that we've named both of these things and then we want to set up the text block here to be dynamic so if we change a variable it will change here too so let's just rename these button text and we'll make that variable and so you use variable if you want to make it change at all okay and the button here I'm going to rename and we'll call this one tab button okay and if you want to use images, you can use images instead if you like. Right up to you. Then we go over to the graph and we're going to create a new variable. And this is going to be text to display. This will be a text variable type. And we want to make it editable. This allows us to change each button as we create them. And to see the update, we're going to take out our pre construct. We're going to drag out our button text component here. And we're going to do set text. And we're going to plug in our text to display. Now, by default, we're going to make our text to display say a certain thing in down at the bottom here. If you leave it blank, it will just appear blank as such. But if I give it some default value, say tab, and go back to the designer, you'll see it says tab. At the moment, the default display of the screen is to be a screen size. You can actually see the actual impact of the size of this button if you go to fill screen and change it to one of these other options. So if I change it to desired on screen, this is how big it's going to look if I just put it onto screen and not change anything about its sizing. Now, if you want to have a standard size per button, which in most cases you probably want to, um, we're going to add a size box to this. Now, you can either wrap the button here with a size box or wrap the content with a size box either way totally fine you can use either one you want i'm going to wrap the whole entire button in a size box i'm going to right, uh, right click do wrap with and do size box and in the size box i'm not worried about the height override but in the width override i'm going to click on this and change this to 150. there is my tab button but let's make it a little bit bigger let's make it 250. there we go if you want to change the height, just change the padding that happens on the text itself. So go over to the text and go to the padding. Just change the padding on the top and the bottom here. So I'll change this to 10. 10. We can hit compile and save that. So this widget has a button in it, but there's no way to really access it outside of this widget. But there is something else we can do. If we go to the graph, and go to the event dispatches we're going to click on the plus icon here and we're going to call this one on tab selected and then on the tab button variable you're going to go to on clicked and when you call on clicked you're going to drag out that event dispatcher to say when the tab has been selected this event dispatcher will then shout out to anything that's listening to it about what is going on so I've hit compile on that and go back to my main menu and then search in my palette here for my tab menu button. I'll drag that into my horizontal box and there it appears. And if I click on it, you can see I can change the text of display here to whatever I like. So let's say, for example, we do uh, play. And if I go down to the bottom here, you'll see that event dispatch has now appeared as a green ad box. 
on tab selected. Now I can control what's going to happen on this button when I click on it. Let's just add a few more buttons in here. So this one here, we're going to change the options. And another one. And this one will say um, upgrades. Oh, no, we call it store. Let's do store. There we go. And there we have our three tab buttons. Now, typically for controller setup, you usually want to put some icon or labeling to say, hey, you can push these buttons to navigate between your three types of buttons here. So inside the horizontal box here, we're going to wrap this with another horizontal box. This first horizontal box that we added here, the one that actually contains the buttons, is the important one because we'll be using this to navigate through. So we're going to just rename this one tab menu and we're going to tick the is variable box on that. Inside the new horizontal box, which is that is a part of, we're going to add two text fields to this and drag in one there and another one. And I'm going to put one of the text blocks here. On the other side of the tab menu, Hit this little arrow, and there it goes. Now to center align this whole selection here, so I want space between the walls here, I'm going to use a spacer and drag that in, and I'll put that either side of our text block. So I've got a spacer there, and I've got a spacer here. I want to actually put it in there. There we go. Um, now to make it fill up the available space, just go over to where it says auto and change it to fill and go to the first one as well, the fill there, and that will force it to take over and push the stuff to the middle here. So these two text blocks on either side, I'm going to go and type in LB and RB. And there we have our basic tab menu. Okay, so now we have the menu set up. In the next episode, we're going to make things look a little bit prettier. Uh, so it's a bit nice to, to look at and making the buttons more what we want them to look like and uh, go from there. So watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can catch all my videos early from just $1 a month. I said thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for the continued support. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.